we gather as God's holy people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift higher heads, for a higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come into your abundant mercy. Gathered together as God's holy people, we turn to our Father, seeking mercy and forgiveness for ourselves and for each other. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why, why have you forsaken me? All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one whom he delights. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and my feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. My, my God, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. My, my God, God, my God, God why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to remain seated for the reading of the Passion Narrative. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was, the, why was the, the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Paschal lamb was sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I, meet the pas where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, 
I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, Sit, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs. From the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of a high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were abandoned? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will, make, I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you the answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the High Blessed? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, 
Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warning himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the crow caught. The servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down, and he wept. As, noon, sorry, as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and hand him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many, ch see how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, as the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels, who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to this custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he had realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him! Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole court cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, 
You would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that he we may sorry now so that we may see and believe those who were crucified with him also taunted him when it was noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon at three o'clock jesus cried out with a loud voice eloi eloi lama samatari which means my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please stand. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. When Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joses, saw where the body was laid. We begin Holy Week. We begin it with the procession, the entrance into Jerusalem. Hosanna to the King. Great joy, great celebration. And then we read the Passion narrative. The struggle of Jesus. And I always find it interesting reading the Passion narrative. A lot of times the person reading the Passion narrative gets a little choked up because as you're reading it, there's that entering into the Passion narrative. When I was younger, many, many, many years ago, Father used to get the altar servers to join in. And we were the crowd. We only had two lines to cry out, crucify him. 
And you know, when you're practicing it, it sounds good, it seems fine. But then you're reading the passion narrative, right? And you got a whole bunch of, you know, nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds standing there anticipating their two lines. And all of a sudden it comes to that part where crucify him. The first time, you're kind of okay. And the second time, there's more squeaking than there is crucify him. I don't know, because none of us ever asked Father why he always insisted having the altar service do it. I do know that over the number of years, less and less of us volunteered for Good Friday and for Palm Sunday because you didn't want to be one of the kids crying out, crucify him. But guess what? That's what you and I are responsible for. He suffered and died for our salvation. He accepted death on the cross so that you and I might have eternal life. He accepted suffering and death to take away our sinfulness. And so we, too, in a sense, are responsible for his crucifixion. You see, Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, has that mixed blessing. Do we understand the glory of the Lord that is contained within this gift that he is offering us? You know how during the Mass we say, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof? Every now and then I would like to get an altar server up in the back somewhere to go, and you're not. Because we're not worthy. None of us is worthy. But by his gracious love, his unconditional love, his never-ending mercy, we are made worthy. And so, yes, we do cry out, crucify him. But in return, God responds, but I love you more. And do we embrace that? Do we celebrate it? Do we rejoice in it? Do we allow that to flow into us and recognize God's gracious love, God's unconditional love for us? He loved us so much that he sent his only son into the world so that you and I might have salvation. And at the same time, yes, you and I cry out, crucify him, crucify him. Our sins are the scourges on his back. Our sins are the nails in his hands. Our sins are the thorns on that crown that he wore. But he embraced all of that out of love for you and me. And this is that whole sense of the Holy Week. God's unconditional love. The suffering, the sorrow, the agony, the pain, and the graciousness of God's love. Sacrament of Reconciliation. You go in, you confess your sins, and you receive mercy and forgiveness. You receive God's love. One of the saddest things for me during this pandemic has been the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Because one of the neat things that I always enjoyed about the Sacrament of Reconciliation, especially with the kids who are doing it for the first time, is that after they had confessed their sins, I gave them absolution, they jump up, they run over and give me a hug. And that's when I knew that they really did understand the graciousness of God's love. And of course, during this pandemic, all of the kids, they've been well trained. They know they can't do that, right? And then I've had a few of them where it's sort of like, (laughs) 
Can I at least get a high five? And so you give him a high five, he hand sanitizes, it's all fine. But you can see the part. The priest stands in the place of Jesus Christ. And those children understand God's mercy and forgiveness and love. And what do they want? The same thing they want from their parents when they're forgiven by their parents. They want that hug that says everything is okay. They want to feel that graciousness of love. When you look at the cross, God's son spread his arms on the cross. The arms of the cross are the arms of Jesus Christ reaching out to you and me to embrace us in his love. It's unconditional, unending love for us. This is the mixture of joy. Our sins are us crying out, crucify him. That he never gets tired of forgiving us and he never gets tired of loving us. And he reaches out his arms to embrace us and to show his compassion and love. This is our most holy week. can't tell you what to do with it, that's up to you. How you journey through this Holy Week, that's up to you. I'll tell you, I go unformed, parish has a subscription for it that all of you can tap into. There are a bunch of beautiful, beautiful programs that they've got set up for this week. There are great opportunities to grow in our faith life. For those of you who subscribe to EWTN or the Catholic Channel, there are great opportunities. Salt and Light out of Toronto has opportunities for you to enhance your journey through this Holy Week. But the choice is yours. It's up to each one of you. How are you going to embrace that? But the offering is there. The imitation is there. And it's in your hands to embrace it, to take advantage of it, to allow it to help you enter more deeply into the joy, the sorrow, the suffering, and the exaltation of this most blessed Holy Week. But at the end of the day, the choice is always yours. Let us stand and make our profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed together. So let us tell each other what it is we believe as we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before our merciful God with humble hearts and offer our petitions. For Pope Francis and leaders of the Church, May the Lord bless their efforts to spread the gospel to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawyers and judges, may God's just judgment inform them in seeking truth, justice, and dignified treatment for all who come before them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted, may the Lord bless them with strength and patience in bearing their crosses and hope in enduring their suffering. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God lead us in this season of Lent to repentance and conversion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young men and women who wish to follow Christ, that they may respond graciously to God's graces, trusting that he will lead them in their discernment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, May they know eternal peace and joy in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we humbly ask you to hear the prayers we offer you this day, for we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. In the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquities. Cleanse us of all of our sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good, good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand to extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your Son, who left us his pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the bishops in your entire people. Just as you've gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. We make our communal proclamation of faith, the body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of St. Michael together. St. Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend us in battle. Be our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke whom we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, trust in the hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you very much, and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you all very much for coming. There are two announcements.